Hey y'all, Hot Rod Dad here. Haven't uploaded a video in a little bit because I've been taking the summer to get some things knocked out and do some home improvement projects, get reorganized in the shop and so I can move on to another project. And one of those things that I've been knocking out this summer is doing a power steering upgrade on old Smokey here. Now this is, uh, this chassis is an original chassis, but it's got, uh, you know, uh, 90s, early 2000s uh, standard street rod uh, suspension under the front of it, which is a Mustang II front end. It's got a Fat Man cross member, um, and it's got uh, stock Mustang II control arms and, and that. But uh, I put a manual rack on it when I built the truck, and I built the truck for my dad. And it's getting a little tough for him to wrestle around in, in parking lots and stuff, so... Um, I decided I'd do a power uh, steering upgrade on it for him. And uh, so this video is for any of y'all doing a uh, 47 to 54 Chevy truck uh, using a Mustang II front suspension, whether you're doing uh, an upgrade or you're starting from scratch. There's a lot of technical information in this video, so uh, it'll give you a little bit of insight about the uh, uh, power racks and uh, you know, this, this truck has got a small block Chevy V8 in it, so uh, it'll give you a lot of information about mating the small block Chevy power steering pump to the Mustang rack and pinion unit. So y'all check it out and see how I did it. I've got old Smokey up here on my poor man's lift, and I'm going to get started on taking the old rack out. And now I'm up under the truck right here, and uh, this is giving me a good chance to uh, check everything out, see how it's holding up. This truck's been on the road for seven years, and uh, overall looks like it's doing really well. Got a little bit of paint peeling right here due to uh, getting some brake fluid on the frame. I'll have to address that, and it looks like I bent this bracket right here just a little bit. That's where I hit a manhole cover that was uh, extended up for paving, repaving right there, and uh, I kind of hit that, skimmed over that, and uh, that's the lowest hanging thing on the truck. So that's uh, that's what it got. Uh, this is just your standard uh, Mustang II front suspension. That's a Fat Man. Fabrications cross member, and I just pieced the rest of it together. That's a uh, stock Mustang II control arms with two inch drop spindles, and uh, yeah, just pretty much your basic street rod stuff. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is take these uh, tie rod ends loose, and uh, I've already took the connor pin out of the way, so I'm going to take this castle nut loose right here now what you want to do is not take that all the way off just leave about two or three threads on it right there and just leave the nut on and now I'll do the other side the same way now what I'm going to do is go in here and just Turn the steering wheel back and forth a few times, like that. That will help to break loose those tie rod ends. Now I'm gonna take my hammer and give this a whack or two right there and see if it'll fall out of that uh, spindle. first hit that's where uh, if where you work the steering wheel back and forth it helps to break that loose it wor works really well and the uh, leaving that castle nut on there keeps it from falling out and flopping around uncontrollably so that's the reason for that this side over here has been uh, a lot tougher so I'm gonna have to break out the old pickle fork here and what that is, just a wedged fork tool right there that you 
put in there like that and you drive it in with a hammer and it separates the uh, joint right there. I don't typically like to use those if I don't have to because it kind of messes up your uh, rubber boot there and you'll have to replace that. But uh, it's a good way to get those separated, those tie rod ends and, and ball joints if you have uh, no other alternative right there. So I'm gonna use that and see if I can persuade that just a little bit and get it to break loose. Now I got that loose and you can see right here, damaged the boot right there a little bit, like I suspected. But you know, that's, a, that's the price you have to pay, I guess. So go ahead and take these nuts off and you can drop those out now. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take this universal joint loose down here. If you can see right there. That uh, hooks to the rack and pinion unit. Should have done that before put it up on the stands, I guess, but uh, I neglected to. Anyway, that's a Borgeson Universal joint. Anybody that's um, been into hot rods or street rods very long knows the name. They make lots of uh, Universal joints for different applications. And uh, you can get uh, just about any uh, combination you want to they make really good high quality universal joints. That jam nut on the outside is a half inch and there's a set screw in there that is, if I'm not mistaken, a 5 30 seconds. Now, while you're there, get you some WD-40 or some penetrating oil of your choice. And spray some oil down in those holes where you took the set screws out and that'll help loosen that up so that when you get ready to drop the rack it should uh, be easier to slide out of that joint now the last thing left to do is to take these two mounting bolts out and I can go ahead and drop that old rack out and get the new one mounted up now these are 15 16 bolts and you'll have to put a uh, wrench back here and then uh, put your ratchet out here or another wrench and uh, back it out right there because these are not welded in you have to hold those in the back so i'm going to go ahead and get that done and uh, then we'll continue let's talk about the racks here for just a minute this is a stock mustang 2 rack and you can see here, it's not physically much larger. There is some uh, tubing right here that you'll have to uh, uh, take into consideration for clearance issues and stuff. Um, there is one inherent problem with these racks, and that is when coupled with the higher pressure output of a uh, Chevy power steering pump, they are very twitchy. They're very quick steering and um, it can can be actually kind of dangerous. It can put you in a ditch. Uh, they, they're so uh, touchy. So to mitigate that, I'll be using this, this uh, kit right here from Borgeson. And that is a pressure reducing kit for the power steering pump of the um, small block Chevy. Also, uh, another thing that you can do, if you have to buy a rack new, I happen to have this one uh, from another project, so that's what I'm using. Uh, but if you have to buy the rack new, 82 to 88 Thunderbird is a higher flowing um, rack, and it will help to mitigate that uh, twitchiness of the steering caused by the power steering pump. You can use that uh, 82 to 88 Thunderbird rack uh, to help with that. And if it's still a little too twitchy for you, you can still use the uh, Borgeson kit in combination with that rack. You can just transfer the tie rod ends uh, from the manual rack to the power rack, but I'm going to be replacing those uh, with these Moog uh, pieces here and uh, right here's the part number right there 
I just picked those up through Speedway and the best thing about these, made in the USA. When you can see here, this is one upgrade you're gonna wanna do for sure. You can see after seven years of service, what these um, rack mount bushings have done. The rubber has deteriorated in them. And here's one I've, I've taken out. You can see there, it's how it's uh, split open there. And the best way to get those out is to drive this out with this metal part out with a hammer and a screwdriver. And this rubber will collapse in on itself and, and uh, make it easy to take out. Now you're gonna definitely wanna do this upgrade. This is a urethane bushing. And these were actually used, this is a factory uh, upgrade Ford did on later model racks. And, um, but it will fit the earlier racks also. I ordered these from Summit Racing. And here is the part number on that. And uh, these are two piece, it separates right here in the middle. And there's one installed. This is a, a lot harder. It's a urethane steel uh, uh, vibration dampening, but uh, it's harder and it won't have uh, uh, the, the effect of the rubber deteriorating over years. Now, the other thing you're gonna have to up, update is the uh, universal joint here. Uh, the original Mustang manual rack well they're nine sixteenths inch 26 spline and the power steering rack is a three quarter inch 36 spline so you'll have to change that also this is a borgeson joint i got um, picked it up at a car show and it's got three quarter inch double d uh, on the other side so there's that. If you haven't uh, already got one, pick yourself up one of these Borgeson catalogs. It's got all the part numbers in it you need. And in the back, it's got several pages of technical info about how to design your steering system, what kind of angles to incorporate into your uni universal joints. It's got information about steering ratios, uh, all kinds of good information about the different kind of splines and uh, how to phase the uh, universal joints, just stuff like that. A lot of um, cautionary notes in here too about what not to do. So if you don't already have one of those, call Borgeson, get you one on the way.